Hi, welcome back to AP Physics 1, Unit 4. Um, this is the Work Energy Power Unit, or WEP. So here we're going to look at kinetic energy. Um, so just like we've been talking about all year long, how we're going to expand what you talked about way back in like elementary school and middle school um, by introducing the equation and then relating this later in the next video to that concept of work from the previous video. All right, so when you exert a force on an object over a distance, you're going to increase the kinetic energy of the object. Why? Because you're applying a force, which means you're accelerating the object, which means you're going to increase the speed of that object. So it's kind of like, you know, this relationship. If you remember, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, right? So when objects move or begin to move, they now possess kinetic energy. The, here's the expansion from middle school to high school. Right, kinetic energy is now given an equation, and it's one half. It's a bad two. So it's one half mass times the speed squared. Okay, so you can see these relationships here. K is directly proportional to mass, and it's also directly proportional to speed squared. And this is the one. The relationship that AP really likes to focus on, right? If I double the speed, what happens to my kinetic energy? If I quadruple the speed, what happens to my kinetic energy? So that factors of change method that we've been doing through these videos is going to be very important here. Okay, so kinetic energy or all forms of energy is going to be scalar. Okay, so that what does that mean? It doesn't matter the direction. Okay, and one thing to note is that kinetic energy can never be negative. And there's two reasons why, right? Kinetic energy cannot be negative. The first is we're squaring the speed, right? So even if my velocity is negative, I'm squaring this, which makes it positive, okay? And then the other thing is this idea that mass is also always going to be positive. And as far as we know, there's no negative mass, right? And so energy will always, or excuse me, kinetic energy will always be a positive number. Now, when we look at the work energy theorem, the change in kinetic energy will be a can be a negative number because it's a change in, right? Final and minus initial, okay? So let's look at <laughs> a couple examples. So here we have a truck moving at six meters per second. Part A, what is the kinetic energy? Part B, what is the truck's kinetic energy if its speed is doubled? So for part B, you can just simply plug in all your numbers, but we're going to practice with that factors of change method, okay? So part A, let's calculate the kinetic energy of the truck. So all we do is one-half mv squared. So we do one-half times mass, which is 3,900 kilograms, times six, which is the speed squared. And so that's going to give me a kinetic energy of 7.0 times 10 to the fourth joules, okay? Notice it's positive, and the other thing is that um, it has a unit of joules, right? That is, the, that is the SI unit here in physics for energy. Now, factors of change, right? What are we going to do? We're going to plug in the method. Plug in ones for constants. So we're going to plug in ones for things that change that didn't change for constants. And then we're going to plug in the factor for, for the things that do change. All right. So what did we do to our speed? Well, we doubled the speed, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my equation, right? And I know this is my original. So whatever I get for this factor, I'm going to multiply it by my original. So one half stays the same. That's always a constant. You don't have to worry about like substituting in something different. The mass of the truck stay the same. Still going to be 3,900 kilograms. But now I doubled the speed, right? And so these are my step one up there. This is my step two. And so my kinetic energy changed by a factor of four. So I quadrupled my kinetic energy by doubling my speed. 
So what does that mean? All I have to do is 4 times my original. So 4 times 7 times 10 to the 4th, and I get 2.8 times 10 to the 5th joules. You can also, in this case, just as easily plug in all of your numbers, but guess what? You're going to end up with the same answer. Now, let's look at one where we have to find the mass. So we're given the kinetic energy of a boat, we're given its speed, and now we're asked to find the mass. So again, we start with the equation, and now we're going to solve this for m. So the first step is I'm going to multiply everything by 2. Right, to get rid of the one half, and then I'm going to divide everything by m to get rid of the mass. Or sorry, not I apologize, that's the one that I want. So let me erase this step. So after so we're at 2k equals mv squared, because typically you're solving for the, the the speed. So I'm going to divide everything by v squared. So mass is going to be 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the speed squared, or 2 times 15,000 divided by 5 squared, or 25. And it tells me the mass of the boat is 1,200 kilograms. The more common solving is actually to find the speed. And so if you want to find the speed, it's going to be the square root of 2k over m, right? And that's here in these kinetic energy problems. All right. So in the next video, go, we're going to kind of smash it all together. We're going to relate it back to work and something known as the work energy theorem. And then after that, we're going to start focusing on conservation of energy.